They seem so flawless on the red carpet, but all those Hollywood actresses, all that glamour, isn't just good jeans and lots of cash. They also have a secret weapon, a stylist behind the scenes to make sure they're not fashion police fodder. And there's one man many in Tinseltown have on speed dial, Brad Goreski, who has parlayed his A-list clientele into his very own reality show. ABC's Paula Ferris got a first-hand look at what happens before the cameras flash. It is the night of fashion's Super Bowl. The Met Ball and Jessica Alba is putting the finishing touches on her red carpet outfit. Yeah, I like yes, it better. Yes, yes. Those are really cool. Right. Countless accessories are being considered. It's super beautiful. Some hits. Ooh. I'm obsessed with that. That's really nice. Others, well. So this is going to come out and it's going to be all crusted diamonds. That's intense. But on this night, Alba has a secret weapon. From Vivier. I love it. It's all hand-sewn little hearts. Brad Goreski, stylist to the stars. He's already done all the hard work. Right. So I'm just, I get to just put it on and have fun. <laughs> so happy. And just right here. In an hour, a swarm of photographers are capturing each fashion choice. Brad's made for Jessica, from the dress to the earrings to the handbag. And by morning, hundreds of fashion and celebrity blogs will scrutinize those decisions and inform the buying habits of consumers everywhere. It's crazy the amount of power that celebrities have in helping to sell product. If they get photographed with a certain handbag, you can bet that the handbag will probably run everywhere and stuff will sell out. I've had it happen to me where I've selected jewelry for a client and had somebody call me and be like, we actually sold four of the pieces. I'm like, who buys a like $175,000 necklace? Okay. You know, because you have Much like, like a Hollywood agent or manager, a stylist can change the course of a star's career. <laughs> as Joe Z, creative director of Elle magazine, sees every day. I think the size really is a gatekeeper today that helps these celebrities shape their likes, their dislikes, their interests. If you see someone carrying a bag, or you see somebody walking out onto the street pumping gas in a specific pair of jeans, that didn't happen by accident. The reality is there are cameras everywhere and the internet really changed the game. Mila Kunis was transformed from a grungy 70s show hipster Mila! to a red carpet darling who snagged a Dior endorsement deal thanks in large part to her stylist, Petra Flannery. When Lady Gaga beefed up her edgy image and became an international fashion icon, her stylist Nicola Formichetti was the wizard behind the curtain. And Angelina's famous protruding leg Stylist Jennifer Raid picked out the precarious hemline it emerged from. I can guarantee you that anytime there's a red carpet, especially big marquee events like the Oscars, the Met, the Grammys, the Emmys, every single celebrity that you see has consulted a stylist. It isn't just putting on a dress and liking the dress, it's who's worn the dress previously? Am I going to show up in a column of who wore it better? I miss those share moments so bad. I mean, you have the occasional kook, like, Helena Bonham Carter who wants to show up at an awards event wearing two different shoes. But otherwise, I think 99.9% .9 of us are acting safe. Brad's power as a stylist has made him a star in his own right. He has his own reality show on Bravo and is currently touring the country to promote his book, Born to be Brad. We're very big fans. Oh, thank you so much. Do celebs ever feel threatened by your own celebrity, though? No, because I'm a dork. <laughs> he isn't just Alba's secret weapon. He's working with Mika Kelly, Demi Moore, and Rashida Jones. Going up, so we want drama. And he's there in their most vulnerable domain, the dressing room. You know, I want my clients to trust me. I mean, they're naked in front of you. You know, they're naked in front of you when they feel skinny. They're naked in front of you when they're bloated off of a plane, they're pregnant in front of you. You're part stylist and part shrink. I would more pitch myself as best girlfriend slash gay best friend. Stylists are everywhere these days. There are books devoted to their craft and reality competitions seeking the industry's next big thing. Okay, go, 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 go. She could do anything. Like, can you imagine the reins would be like up there. I mean, I don't know. The biggest superstar stylist of them all Brad's old boss, Rachel Zoe. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Her TV show, The Rachel Zoe Project on Bravo, is now shooting its fifth season. She has a QVC line and a high fashion label of her own. 
the price tag for her styling services, a reported $10,000 a day. No, we can't go to that. As for Brad, he's reaching major fashion heights of his own while occasionally being brought down to size by those pesky fashion police at Us Weekly. I've been on it a couple of times, and I think it's hilarious. I went to visit my, um, my grandmother in Port Perry in the nursing home, and on her wall, she had a photo of me on the worst dress. Like, Grandma, you do realize that picture you have on your wall is like <laughs> of them saying I look terrible, right? <laughs> She's like, I think you look cute. I'm like, well, if Grandma approves, then I don't really care what they have to say. Back in New York, it wasn't just Grandma that approved of his work on Alba. It was like my favorite moment ever. It looks like a shot from Vogue from like the late like 1970s. It's exactly the moment we were going for. So it was a grand slam. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great night. For Nightline, I'm Paula Ferris in New York. Oh,